tutorial on the Electron Dig Attack. Today we're going to see how you can get more than four bars of MIDI out to control an external synth like the Waldorf Blofeld that I have here today. I'm going to start with a brand new pattern here on Bank 2. You can see the sequencer is playing and there's no sound coming out. I have default drums and nothing on the MIDI tracks. I'm going to set this MIDI track to channel 1. Hold function and click in encoder A. Set this one to channel 2 because the blow felt is multi timbral. Now we can have a bass sound on MIDI channel A, track 9, and track 10, a pad sound. If we go in here, you can have chords. And that's really when you might want more than four bars of MIDI data. So after four bars, the chord can change, and you don't need to resample and use up multiple MIDI tracks for that. So let's start by putting in some kick drums, set it to one bar, and this is really important up here where it says pattern. We're going to, I'm going to move the camera. This is a risky thing to do for a YouTube video. Move the camera in the middle of the thing. Hopefully you can see that a little better now. Up here it says FN plus yes per track. So we're going to hold FN and press yes. And this changes. Now track one is 16 steps long and the scale is one by meaning uh, one sixteenth of a measure at whatever the tempo is set to and in this case it's 120. All right so we have one bar at 16 right and these go through as you would expect. Now we're going to show on the snare that we want it on the two and four. Instead of putting the two and four here like you would normally do I'm going to put it on step nine. And that's going to put it just on the three, right? But if we go into the scale, put on two times, now it plays through these snare steps twice as fast. We'll leave that on just the three for the backbeat. Maybe put in some hi hats. that level down a little bit and uh, go into the scale length start it over now if you look in here these lights are moving more slowly at half the speed and when I put the snare on step 9 to get it on the 2 and 4 you remember I put it at double speed so what we can do now for the pad is, I'll just record it live, and the length, 32. Make this two pages long. These are supposed to be 32 long. Let's quantize these. This is showing 32. So this is the maximum length over here. It was only allowed to go up to 16. I put this one to 32 and it just looped the first 16. So let's put that all the way to 128. Now, also, if you hold FN when you're spinning this knob, it goes in multiples of the bar lengths. Now they're overlapping and it sounds like garbage, right? But if we change this to one eighth of the speed, and we go back and watch the lights here. That's too slow. That's too slow. Let's make it half speed. All right. Now, if we go back and make this instead of 32 beats long, this can be 64. This one can also be 64. 
Now they're going to overlap again. We'll change this to a quarter speed. like four bars on default speed. Two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. And if we come out of here and we look at any other track, we'll look at the uh, kick drum track. Oops. This is just one for right now, but now we have the kick pattern is four hit on the last beat of the fourth bar and now if we go back and look at that track it's only two bars long right three four four two here's the extra kick and now we're in bar two of the pad now we can edit Let's turn these off. I'm going to create these chords from scratch. And this one can be... Let's put in a clap fill. The last four. It's a little loud. But you'll hear every four bars, every time you loop through that four bar pattern, the chord changes with the MIDI out. seeing these lights change for the four bars of the clap, but if we look at the pad, we're in the first bar, second bar, that's the chord change, there's one chord per each of these. Now why is this, uh, oh, you know what happened? It's more than 128 steps. Is it 256? Let's try this. Because that was 32 native steps at the tempo. Here's another 32. That adds up to 64, which was our maximum. Now we're in the third bar, which goes up to 96. This last one's gonna be 128. That's in the wrong octave. C6, how about C5? What were these? C4. And maybe down another octave. Let's see if that lines up. No, it's C5. Okay. It was correct. There we go. And at the end of every chord, you hear those claps. So this is how you can get effectively more than 64 steps in a pattern. Now, you can't actually get 60, more than 64 different steps. Like you can't have a, a melody that has 128 different notes unless you chain two patterns together. But you can get a pattern that lasts for more than 64 steps. You can get one chord that lasts 64 steps and then not have to use multiple patterns and you don't have to resample.
So that was too many notes in too short of a time. If I want that to be one bar, as I perceive it to be with the uh, chords, I'll change the scale to a quarter. So it quantizes to the latest. You heard there's a skip in there because I played an extra note and there aren't enough steps in a bar to fit that. Even though this single bar can last for four native bars, you hear the clap fill at the end of one bar of this bass line. So, there you have it. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope this has been useful. I've been Jamie, you've been awesome. Click like on this video and don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to be putting more videos out like this in the future. Be sure to check out the links in the description below. Check me out on Instagram at cello underscore 789. And if you found this useful, be sure to leave it in a comment below what type of music you're making with this, what external synthesizers you're using with your dig attack, and be sure to click that bell icon for notifications because the next video I put out is going to be about how to send automation data out over MIDI to your external synthesizers. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.